Hello, welcome to the Artemis Defense Institute. My name is Stephen Lieberman. I'm one of the co-owners of the Artemis Defense Institute. And in this video series that we've put together, it's designed to assist new gun owners in navigating the process of acquiring a firearm for the first time. Um, this video is watched in other states besides California. In fact, I know that a number of people from the East Coast have emailed me directly after having watched some of these videos. A couple of uh, disclaimers. I am an attorney, but I'm licensed to practice only in the state of California. This is, by definition, going to be a California-centric series of videos where we talk about the law. That being said, there are similarities between a number of different states, and certainly when we talk about federal law, um, it would apply across all 50 states. So I encourage you to watch the video, and you know, even if you aren't necessarily a California resident, you may see how things have to operate within the state of California, and you can thank God that you don't live in California. Um, that being said, the title of this video is You've Been Denied, Now What? All right, so in California, before we start, there's always the, uh, um, the way we start these videos, the four safety rules. It's something that I want you guys to absolutely have ingrained in your DNA. We're going to treat all guns as though they are always loaded. We're never going to let the muzzle cover or point at anything that we're not prepared to destroy. We're going to keep our finger off the trigger unless our sights are on target and we made the decision to shoot. We're going to know our target and its environment. All right, so I've been denied. What does that mean? Well, when you go to a gun store, all right, in order to f purchase a firearm, you have to fill out what's called a 4473 form. And we have a very long video in this series on the process of buying your first gun, okay? Well, within that process, there is both a state and a federal nexus that takes place. You fill out a form called a 4473 form. This could be for buying a handgun. This could be for buying a shotgun. This could be for buying a rifle, okay? You're always going to fill out that same form. And then that information is going to be transmitted Depending upon which state you're in, in California, that information is going to be transmitted to the Department of Justice in Sacramento. They are then going to take that information and they're going to undergo a background check. Now, what they're essentially trying to determine is whether or not you are, in fact, what's called a prohibited person. Right? And there's a number of different ways that you could become a prohibited person. You could be a felon and you've lost your gun rights. It could be that you are a, uh, what's called a misdemeanor, somebody who has been either, you know, convicted or had pled guilty to the crime of misdemeanor domestic violence. That's called a Lautenberg, and under federal law, that now makes you a prohibited person from being in possession of a firearm. It could also be that you're an undocumented alien in the United States, um, or it could be simply just a statutory definition. You have purchased a handgun within the last 30 days. You're still within that window, and you started a new handgun purchase too early. That's uh, called the 1 in 30 rule, and we have a video on that, you know, uh, that says a standalone video. Regardless, you get a denial. This is not to be confused with the Department of Justice telling the gun store, we need more time, we have, we're issuing a delay. This is a flat out denial. Now that denial could be that the state of California found something in your background that they think now makes you a prohibited person. It could also mean that the FBI, because the state will do their own investigation, but then they'll send it to the federal government and have them do an investigation. That's called a NICS check. It's the National Instant Criminal System Background Check, okay? What they'll do is they'll look across all state lines to see whether or not you're a potential prohibited person. Once they've decided that, yeah, you know what? You should not be in possession of a firearm. They issue this denial. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean that the game is over. Depending upon why you were denied, you may have the ability to appeal that denial. Sometimes that denial is simply because the state or the federal government has a complete mix-up in records. That does happen like any other bureaucratic institution. 
It also could be that you had a previous conviction that has in fact been completely exonerated, all right? So the underlying conviction might have prohibited you from being in possession of firearms, but through either a gubernatorial pardon or some other type of process, all of your firearms rights have been restored. It could also mean that the federal government has had some sort of mix up in your records or they improperly determined that you cannot be in possession of a firearm. Um, the law offices of Lieberman and Terramina, we've had a number of these cases where we've had to essentially restore the rights of law-abiding citizens to be able to acquire firearms. So if you get a denial, there is a, an initial administrative process that you have to undergo. You, with virtually everything that you deal with the government, the first thing you have to show is that you have exhausted all of your administrative remedies. And there is, in fact, an actual administrative appeal that you have to file. After you've exhausted that, if you get a, a subsequent denial on your appeal, then the only opportunity you have is to actually bring a lawsuit, usually for declaratory relief, against the institution that's telling them that you can't have a gun. It might be the federal government, it might be the state government. Typically speaking, it doesn't go that far. About 99% of the time, simply having an attorney talk to the people in the government on your behalf is usually enough to fix the issue. Every so often, we actually have to bring litigation, but that's the process that you're going to want to undergo. If you have any questions about being denied, you can always contact us at the Artemis Defense Institute or the Law Offices of Lieberman and Terramina. You can email me directly at stephen at artemishq.com. And if you actually feel like you have a legal issue that needs to be uh, taken care of, you can email me through my law offices at stephen at ltccwlaw.com. As always, train constantly, train consistently, train repetitively, and train with purpose. Above all else, stay safe.